Welcome to MET 200, uh, Manufacturing Processes and Material. This is Dr. Hamid Isazadeh. In this lecture, we will go over um, uh, this uh, topic, shaping uh, glasses. If you want to know which chapter it is in the book, um, it is chapter 12, uh, page 287. The glass working has four sections, raw material preparation and melting, um, shaping processes in glass working, heat treatment and finishing. The last part will be product design consideration. Previously, we talked about um, uh, glasses. We mentioned that the glass is one of the three basic categories of uh, ceramic. Ceramic has uh, three categories, like a uh, traditional uh, ceramic, which are based on the clay and um, abrasive wheels and cements. These are some of the traditional ceramics. Then we had a uh, new ceramic or called the uh, industrial uh, ceramic. And these are uh, recently developed and uh, this material, this uh, ceramic are based on oxide uh, or carbide. They have a better uh, mechanical property than comparing with the traditional uh, ceramic. The last one is um, glasses. And glasses are primarily uh, based on the silica. And they are distinguished by their uh, non-crystalline structure. And the silica or a silica glass is uh, in the form of an SiO2 and this is a non-crystalline structure of SiO2. Let me, for example, this is silicon. And oxygen, let's say it's a blue color, bigger atom, totally they should be eight because eight atom is the most stable structure that we can find in the in uh, nature. So this is oxygen, and there are other uh, structure on the other side. So this uh, pattern can be repeated. So because it's a uh, random, uh, it's called non-crystalline structure so the structure is not crystalline it's not you know um, organized there are a lot of uh, glass products the material is glass for example light bulbs beverage bottles all of them are uh, glass they are made of uh, a glass material window glass another example um, glass uh, tubing glass fibers the, the giant uh, glass lenses they're all made of uh, glasses so these are some of uh, some of the glass applications glass material can have different um, composition if we look at the pure silica uh, composition, the density is low, the strength is uh, rel relatively high, the cost is high for uh, making um, a pure uh, silica glass. 
There are other type of glasses. The ingredient can be a soda lime. It's a soda. Uh, this uh, formula actually dates back to glass blowing industry around the 1800 or um, earlier and it was uh, made by mixing soda and lime soda is n a 2 o this is soda and lime is C A O. If we have soda lime glass, the density is higher than the pure silica, and the cost of the production is going to be much lower than the pure silica. The shaping methods for uh, glass are quite different from those for the traditional and new ceramic material, which are based on the particulate uh, processing. In this schematic, as you see, uh, we have a typical process sequence in glass working. Uh, first, we have a sand material, then the sand is going to be melted, then the, that material, the molten glass will be used to uh, make any shape um, made of uh, glass material. So when the sand is melted, when it, um, the material uh, remains in a glassy state rather than you know, the crystalline structure. What are the raw material that we use in uh, glass shaping uh, process? The raw material is, as I mentioned before, is silica. You know, the main component is silica and it is a SiO2. It is available in sand um, because it's a natural you know, quartz. If you have equipment or a facility to melt the sand, then you can um, create a glass once the sand is melted it forms a you know, glassy form then if you um, then you know cool it to room temperature it stays at that you know in that uh, glassy uh, state there are other components which can uh, they give you a desired uh, composition, desired you know, property, like uh, soda ash is, uh, is one of them, limestone, uh, we have aluminum oxide in glass. Sometimes we use you know, recycled glass in, in the glass making process. So it can um, reduce the cost of the, the uh, raw material. In the glass melting uh, process, we uh, take a batch of starting material, and that uh, batch of starting material is called charge. And then we load it into the furnace, and that uh, process is called charging the furnace. And the temperature in the glass making process um, can vary between 1500 to 1600. So you need the equipment. Um, to raise the temperature temperature up to that point uh, at maximum 1600 degrees Celsius so uh, because it's a high temperature uh, it's a Celsius it's a high te temperature so uh, equipment um, is expensive the next point is the viscosity of the molten glass is inversely related to the temperature what does it mean it means if the temperature goes up, the viscosity uh, decreases. If the temperature 
if it goes down, then the viscosity it decreases. So shaping the process has to start immediately during you know when you take the metal um, molten glass from the furnace. Glass shaping processes are uh, categorized into three groups. The first group is called this is called the discrete process, which are um, used to make a pieceware like uh, bottles, jars, and plates. The second group is called continuous process, which can be used to make a flat glass. It can be used to make a sheet and plate glass, as well as a tubing. The last one is a fiber making process, in which the shaping process, the glass shaping process, is used to make a small um, glass material for insulation. Uh, insulation can be um, thermal insulation, it can be electrical insulation, also, it can be a, a sound insulation. So the insulation has uh, has a several uh, variety. Shaping of the pieceware is one of the uh, discrete processes, and the glass blowing is one of them, and it is a old method. Um, handicraft methods or uh, glass blowing uh, are still used uh, these days for making you know a small uh, quantity parts and uh, because it takes a lot of time to make the part uh, normally the cost of the part is higher than the, those parts that are uh, built or made by a um, um, factory. Um, factories they use a mechanized uh, technology for you know producing the discrete pieces uh, like uh, bottles you know jars and uh, in high uh, quantity. You see this uh, picture is uh, showing the handicraft method to make a, um, the glassware item. But uh, here is a um, factory that is producing a bottle and it is a mechanized uh, uh, technology. The mechanized technology can be used to make a pieceware. Here we have one, uh, one of them. It is called the spinning process. It has two steps as you see. The, the first step is this, where we have a gob of hot metal. It's um, dropped into the mold. This part is called the mold. Then the mold is going to be rotated because of the centrifuge effect. Uh, the material will take the will pick up the shape of the mold. This is the part. As you see here. And this process is very similar to centrifugal casting of metal. Next is pressing of uh, flat pieces. This is another piece per uh, shaping process where we have a hot glass cup here. plunger press the cup and then it will be retracted here is the finished part and this process is used for mass production of flat products um, such as dishes tv tube face plates and etc The next process is called press and blow. In this process, the molten gob is fed into the mold cavity 
this is the first mold gravity we have two mold this is the first one and the plunger is gonna press this egg up and we have um, the partisan as you see this is called partisan and the partisan will be moved to another um, mold like here and then the air is going to be blown uh, to create the final sh shape and this process normally is used for wide mouth uh, containers like um, jars this process is a modified version of the previous one it's, it's called uh, blow and blow as you see in this um, picture, the gob is located in the first uh, cavity, in the first mold cavity. The air will be uh, blown from the bottom, and it uh, take uh, the initial shape in this um, mold cavity. Then the mold is going to be repositioned. And that part will be moved to another mold cavity again the air will be uh, blown to create the final shape uh, this production is mostly designed for a smaller um, amount uh, container like uh, beverage uh, bottles and uh, light bulbs Uh, casting the uh, casting process also are used for uh, a glass shaping but um, because the process you know the casting process requires that metal uh, the glass uh, should be in a liquid form the cost of the equipment is high um, because as you know during the casting process, the temperature um, should be a little above the melting point. For example, if the, the melting point of the glass is 1500 or 1600, um, the temperature of that material should be at least 100 degrees Celsius more than the melting point. So it should be 1700 degrees Celsius. The, the generally the cost of the equipment um, for casting is higher. Um, it is it will be reasonable for uh, objects like a massive object such as astronomical lenses and mirrors. And after you know uh, the production, the casting process, the items should be finished, uh, should be polished, so to make a, 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 um, to make the desired uh, surface finish. If we are interested in the smaller lenses then the pressing is preferred over um, a casting process the next category as you mentioned uh, previously is called continuous process in the con continuous process we can make a flat plate or you no know, uh, flat uh, glass here we have a molten glass on this picture as you see then the starting uh, glass um, comes from this point we have two forming roll that um, rotate in the opposite direction and um, there are some polishing machines this um, and this part and polishing grinding to make sure that we have a, a smooth surface on the glass. The next process is called float uh, process or float glass. 
which is um, a process where a sheet of glass is made by floating molten glass on a tin bath. Tin or um, other material, it can be um, lead. Those uh, material that has a low melting point. Because we are using a liquid, as you see in this part, this is a liquid bath, and here we have molten glass, which travels this way, and because we are using that liquid, then we don't need any grinding or polishing as a post-process. You can have a very uniform uh, material, uniform glass. Here we have Danner process for drawing glass tubing. In this uh, process, we have a molten glass, which is coming this way. And then we have a mandrel, which uh, air is going to be um, blown inside. As you see here, it has a, a hollow structure. And because of that um, air traveling inside the tube, it, um, you can have a tube structure. Uh, glass fibers are another um, uh, products of uh, glass shaping uh, processes, and the glass fibers uh, are used in application ranging from insulation wool to fiber optic communication lines. And these uh, glass fibers can be divided into into two main um, category. One is called fibrous glass, which are used for uh, thermal insulation, uh, air filtration, and then um, this next one is a um, long and continuous uh, filament. And the, uh, these uh, long fiber are used for um, fabric, they can use for the fiber optics. And then those uh, internet lines, uh, they use this type of you know, um, uh, fibers. And each uh, uh, category uh, uses the, uh, its own uh, process, like uh, the fibrous uh, glass. Um, we, the centrifugal spring is used to produce a, a, these short fibers. And the other one, um, the long and continuous filament, um, the drawing is, uh, the drawing process is uh, utilized. The first process is the centrifugal spraying, which is used uh, to make a glass wool or um, for short fiber, short glass fiber. In this um, process, there is a spinning head like this, um, and it is rotating it's, uh, with a certain uh, velocity. Then we have a molten metal, uh, molten glass uh, that comes here. Let me draw it with a different color. So we have molten glass, this area. There is um, orifices, a lot of orifices, hundreds of them, located on this um, head. When we have rotation, then we have centrifugal force, right? So this molten glass uh, will tr go through um, this orifices and because of the gravity it fell. Then there is a binder spray or something, some spray that cools um, these um, fibers. When they drop on the conveyor, which is here, um, which um, the conveyor is there to collect 
you know, this uh, fibers. When they drop, uh, the, the fibers will break into uh, small pieces, but then it can be used uh, for the uh, thermal or acoustical insulations. So this is a, a, a centrifugal spraying process. Uh, the next process is called um, continuous glass uh, fiber, which is this schematic. Um, if you have the molten metal uh, similar to centrifugal spraying on the top, but there is a small difference, There's no centrifugal force here. Also, we have a heated orifice plate. We have orifice at the bottom of the this uh, molten glass, and this a strand of a molten glass are pulled toward down, and then it will be collected on this uh, spool. Similar to metal, we uh, can have heat treatment for glasses and the process called annealing of the glass. Uh, the process starts with heating uh, the glass to very high temperature, elevated temperature. It can be um, uh, 500 degrees Celsius. Then uh, the glass has to stay that temperature um, in the this, this certain amount of time. Um, to eliminate, you know, uh, um, some of the stress that was built during the process. So that uh, when the, the glass hits uh, the annealing temperature, the stress is going to be gone, right? Because the material at high temperature cannot hold um, a higher um, Higher stress. The stress will be deformed. Uh, it will be uh, converted to deformation. Okay. It, then the, um, the glass will be cool um, to room temperature and um, this process is also done in the metal uh, and it is called a stress relieving in, because if we want to increase the efficiency uh, or in the lower the amount of uh, time uh, or the lower the production cost they use a tunnel like furnace where um, it has a conveyor, so it's a, a tunnel-like, so the glass comes here and then it goes out on the other end. So this way, um, the production can go up um, because it is a continuous process. Next process is called tempering of glass. In this process, the uh, glass is going to be heated to um, a temperature point above the annealing temperature. So, for example, the annealing temperature previous, in the previous slide we said it's around you know, 500 degrees Celsius, but tempering can be 600 degrees Celsius or 700 degrees Celsius. Um, so the material has to uh, be heated up so that's 700 degrees Celsius. Then we have a quenching process where we have an air jet that is going to cool the surface of the um, glass. Let's say we have um, this glass and we have air jet top and bottom. So the surface will cool down faster because it's uh, it's exposed to that um, air jet, right?
but the internal is still hot. This area is still hot. It takes some time um, for that uh, center to become uh, um, uh, cooler. What happens when during that uh, cooling process for the center, be, um, that center material will induce some compression because when material is going to contract or shrink, uh, shrink they expose, they induce a compression a stress to the surrounding area, right? Let's say this material is going to contract, but this uh, surrounding area doesn't allow uh, to the center to contract. So it has, it applies some compression to, you know, load to this area. What happens, then the surface is going to be under compression stress. So this is going to be one advantages when you have a compression uh, stress on the top and bottom surface of the glass. It makes it you no know, resistant to a scratching. A lot of windows uh, for the tall build building are made uh, um, with this technique, and they are safer uh, glasses. In terms of safety, this is a better uh, type of glass uh, for these applications. The next application of the glasses is in automobile windshield. Um, we cannot use the tempered glass in a, a windshield, in the automobile windshield, because when it shatters, you know, it hits the object, it shatters, then uh, it becomes a lot of you know, small you know, fragment. So it's not safe for the passengers. Then they um, came up with a, a, a new design, a different you know, um, design, where the glass is going to be conventional type of glass, but it is fabricated, you know, by sandwiching the two pieces of the glass on uh, either side of the uh, a polymer sheet. So we have a polymer sheet and on top part, the two side of uh, this polymer sheet, we have glass. This is this one and this one and this yellow is polymer in, with this technique if um, the, the, um, something happened to the windshield or you know in the accident the glass splinter is going to be retained by that you know polymer sheet so and also the windshield can stay um, all um, transparent it still can be used here we have uh, the finishing operation that can be done on glasses um, for example we can use grinding and polishing to make the surface um, very smooth. Cutting can be used uh, to cut the stock um, to the favorite size. 
when we use a pressing or blowing um, process, um, then we use you know, polishing to remove the seam mark on the product. Uh, the cutting process is uh, done uh, with a glass cutting wheel that can create a very small crack on the uh, glass. Then along that um, crack, the uh, uh, glass can be uh, broken. There are other you know, finishing operations that can be used uh, to decorate uh, the glasses. Um, for example, um, sandblasting is one of them. Can change the shape of the, the color of the glass. We, we can use, you know, chemical etching, uh, which uses a certain acid, um, or in combination with other, you know, chemical material. We can have some coating on the glass to make, you know. A mirror for example if we use um, silver or aluminum we can produce um, a mirror um, it's, as you know mirror has a lot of application the glass actually has a special property that make it, make it uh, very desirable in certain application here are some of the some of those uh, 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 design consideration, for example, uh, glass is very transparent and it has a uh, optical property that are uh, unusual um, for application that uh, requires transparency, light uh, ma magnification, and uh, similar optical property are required glass this is going to be the material of choice but there we have some uh, polymers that are transparent they can be competitive um, they, uh, um, the polymer can be used instead of the glass depending on the cost um, or um, the efficiency the next uh, point is that glass is much stronger in compression uh, comparing with the tension property. Um, it's uh, like a ceramic material we mentioned. All ceramic are stronger in the compression rather than you no know, tension. So um, the component uh, should be designed to be subject to to be subjected only to compress compressive stress. If it is uh, under tensile stresses, uh, we may have some uh, failures. And the next property is uh, glass is brittle, and it, it should not be exposed to impact loading or high stress because it, uh, it leads to fracture. The next uh, point or next uh, consideration is that um, the glass composition has a very low thermal ex uh, expansion coefficient. Because of that uh, property, they can tolerate a high thermal um, shock because they cannot, they will not um, um, expand or shrink uh, due to uh, the their low thermal expansion coefficient. And next point is that uh, we have to avoid stress concentration in uh, glasses. So, uh, for example, if you have an application that requires some edges and corners, so these edges should not be uh, sharp. The radius of these corners um, should be large. So we can avoid uh, uh, those stress concentration at the corner. So we don't have any high stresses because high stress um, will lead to 
to fracture at, at that uh, corner. It is possible to create a um, thread on the glass, but the thread should be very coarse. Again, if you make it um, um, very small or sharp uh, thread, uh, then we have a point of um, stress concentration.